Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be looking at physical and chemical properties and so if you missed this in class this would be a great opportunity for you to fill in your notes. If you have any questions let me know the next day. All right so first thing we need to talk about are physical properties and chemical properties. So the first ones that we're going to look at there are going to be physical properties and that is any characteristic of matter that can be observed or measured without changing it. So in other words if I gave you a block of aluminum and then I said, okay, we're going to test for these different properties. And then when we're done with those tests, you still had aluminum. That would be physical properties that we were looking at. If, on the other hand, we did you know, some different things to this aluminum, and now that we're done, it's not aluminum anymore, like, like maybe it's aluminum oxide or aluminum nitride or some other compound, those would have been chemical properties. So what kind of properties do you need to know? The first type of physical property that you need to be aware of is color, because it's the most obvious. It is any pigmentation of a substance. Now, pigmentation is subjective. So um, you'll see a lot of times, you know, in uh, tables online, if you're looking things up, it'll say, oh, it has like, you know, this blue-green color to it. And then you look at it and you're like, oh, that looks green to me. That's okay. Um, it is a very subjective property, and so color isn't used a whole lot unless it's something that's extremely obvious, that only, you know, oh, there are only a couple of things that come in this, you know, particular color if we're looking at pure substances. Another one, ductility. So ductility um, is the ability for a substance to be able to be turned into a wire. So what you do is you take that substance and you stretch it out. And if it breaks, it's not very ductile. If it stretches and you're able to make a wire out of it, that is high ductility. Another one, malleability. Malleability is you take a hammer, you uh, bang the heck out of it with a hammer, and if it shatters, that's low malleability. On the other hand, if you can flatten it and it doesn't break, that would be high malleability. Another one, kind of the obvious one here, boiling point. Boiling point? the temperature at which a substance goes from a liquid to a gas. And when we say the boiling point, normally we mean the normal boiling point, which is at sea level and at, you know, basically regular atmospheric conditions. Another one, the other obvious one, melting point. What is the melting point? That is the temperature at which a substance goes from a solid to a liquid. So if you take an ice cube and you melt that ice cube, the ice cube will melt at 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is true at sea level, so at you know regular conditions here. It will boil, so if you have that now liquid water and you decide to boil it, it will boil at 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, luster. Luster is how shiny something is, and so that is the ability of it to reflect light. Things that are lustrous tend to look more metallic to us, or look more expensive to us, let's say. Uh, things with low luster, they're very dull, they're kind of dark, a little dreary looking. And then finally, hardness. So hardness is the ability to resist force and not break. It's kind of like malleability, but it's kind of a little bit different. So it's whether or not something can be scratched. Um, and there's a whole scale for that that goes from like, you know, one to 10, 10 being like diamond and one being like baby powder where, you know, just kind of talc, just kind of breaks apart in your fingers. So if you were in class, you'd get to see these physical properties. But um, if you weren't in class and you're watching this video, chances are you, you know, you just need to write these things down. So we looked at magnesium. So what color is magnesium? Magnesium is a shiny silver or a gray color, depending again on your perspective of pigmentation. Ductility, it has very low ductility. You can't really turn magnesium into a wire. It'll kind of break apart. Malleability, on the other hand, is extremely high. You can get a very thin sheet of magnesium, and that's kind of what I showed you in class. Boiling point, okay, it has a very high boiling point, but that's just because it's a metal, right? We have 1,091 degrees Celsius. Uh, melting point, 650 degrees Celsius. Is it lustrous? Yeah, it's pretty lustrous. I mean, it's really shiny when it's clean, and when it's not clean, it's pretty, you know, dingy and kind of dull. And then what about its hardness? It has pretty horrible hardness for a metal. It's uh, between 1 to 2.5, depending on, you know, kind of what you're looking at with magnesium, uh, where, where it's found, and what impurities are in there. Um, so it's very easily uh, broken. In fact, I broke it with my fingers in class. All right, let's look at the chemical properties. Now, there are tons of chemical properties. Um, we're only going to look at four of them. Uh, but chemical properties are characteristics that can only be observed when you are combining 
whatever you're looking at with other substances. So that's chemical reactions, okay? So the first one, uh, combustibility. So if something's combustible, that means that it's able to burn or catch fire easily. It's a very easy chemical property to look at. Next up, reactivity. Does it show a response to a substance? You can have water reactivity, oxygen reactivity. Um, there are plenty of different ways of looking at reactivity. Next up, corrosivity. So is it corrosive? Does it tend to destroy or damage other substances? Or on you know, the other hand, is it destroyed or damaged by other substances? And then last but not least, toxicity. Is it able to damage or kill an organism? So everything is toxic you know, when you have a lot of it. But we're looking at, you know, like usual everyday levels, you know, for the most part. So we looked at magnesium. Is it combustible? Yep, it burns really, really well. Is it water reactive? Not really. If you add it to room temperature water, nothing's going to happen. You have to add it to really hot water. And even then, the reaction is really, really, really slow. So magnesium under regular conditions is pretty non-reactive with water. Uh, is it corrosive in acid? Yes, it dissolves in acid like most metals do. And then is it toxic? Well, again, not really. It depends on how you look at that uh, and how you look at toxicity. But for the most part, you know, it's going to be pretty hard for you to be able to, you know, OD on magnesium. All right. And so that's it for physical and chemical properties. If you have any questions, let me know in class.